Hey guys, so Merry Christmas. It's December 27th, technically the third day of Christmas. And uh, I'm here with my sister Mary. Okay. And we're just here, you know, home for Christmas. Everyone else is out of the house right now. And um, since it's been a big past couple months uh, for this channel, I thought I'd do something that we've never, we've never done before at all, and do a Q&A, answer a bunch of questions. And we got a bunch of questions here. Got them all right here. And I'm gonna answer these to the best of my ability. And since Mary is better at answering questions about me than I am, I thought I'd bring her along to help. You're terrible at talking about yourself. I'm really bad at talking yeah. about myself. Yeah. So, Mary, shall we begin? Yes. Patrick, which directors do you look up to? Okay, which director do I look up to? Um, like any proper movie nerd, I like a lot of directors, but I think I can boil it down to three. Um, that are the most relevant. Okay. Um, Edgar Wright, who is probably my nice. biggest inspiration, and um, the filmmaker who I think whose tastes and sensibilities align the most with my own. Mm -hmm. uh, Steven Spielberg, who I think is the greatest visual storyteller in the history of the medium. And Steven Soderbergh, uh, because he is one of the rare filmmakers uh, who like makes you know big stuff, but also works the same way I do, because he's his own cinematographer and editor. I didn't know and, uh, Yeah, uh, for pretty much everything um, from traffic onward. That's, that was 2000. Oh, okay. And, um, and so I, I'm like, so I love watching his stuff to see how he essentially works the same way I do, but on way bigger stuff. Cool. And um, I think that's really impressive, and uh, I really love them all. Are you planning on making a feature film someday? Yes. He also asked if there was one director you wish would direct a Marvel or DC movie, who would it be? So somebody who hasn't directed one yet. I would love to see what the Coen brothers would do Ooh. with a Marvel or DC movie. And I think they would, they would make the best Superman movie ever. And um, I always think they'd do just one and then get back to doing their own thing. But uh, I think they would crush one of those. Will you make more video essays? Well, um, I think I hope I answered that two weeks ago because I released a video essay two weeks ago mm -hmm. that I hope you've watched. And at the end of that video essay, I said that I will be making a video essay every single month. So, yes. What are your goals for the future, both short and long term? That is a huge question. That also doesn't specify filmmaking. So, I would like to be able to afford to live alone. And I would like to make... Uh, projects with budgets that I that, that don't come out of my own pocket. Right. It, William Osborne asks, if you had a time machine, where would you go? This is the thing that I've thought about just in my life. Right. I don't want to go to any point where I'm still alive, whether it's like in my lifetime okay. or in like a, like early in my life or in the future where I'm still alive, because it would freak me out too much, especially going to the future and like. I know. Risk disappointment by seeing where you are. Anyway. Yeah. I would like to go like, let's say 200 years into the future just to see what's up. Okay. And, um, because I'll be long dead by then. Yeah. And I would like to go to, let's say the early 60s. Yeah. And, um, and pick up some comic books that were available then. <laughs> and then save them and sell them in the future? Um, and bring them back to the present and save some and sell some and I could totally just like live off that. Okay. Seriously, an amazing fantasy number 15. Pfft, great. I don't know what I, that is. That's the first appearance of Spider-Man. Oh, it was called Amazing Fantasy? Yeah. He appeared in the last issue of the series, oh. and um, it was about to be canceled, but then that issue was such a hit, then they gave him in his own series. Oh, okay. It was one of those like kind of like anthology series, Amazing Fantasy. Is there a superhero movie that you would like to write or direct? Yes. Which one? I feel like... I, I, maybe I should do a whole video about this because I have a very clear plan. Mm -hmm. My dream directing project, if, in terms of like adaptations, is Batman Beyond. What kind of film camera do you usually use in? Do you usually use to film your videos? There you go. I can answer this very simply. Okay. So, a lot of you know filmmakers, I mean like internet videos like me, are really into you know constantly upgrading. And getting new stuff. Mm -hmm. And I am not. Granted, this is largely based on what I can afford. But um, for the past 
five and a half years, I've shot almost every one of the, the videos that you've seen on a Canon Rebel T2i. Same thing. Mm -hmm. And I've just gotten better at using it and um, better at knowing what the camera can do and like, mm -hmm. like uh, knowing its limitations and pushing it as far as it can go. And um, yeah, almost every video has been shot on the same little camera that costs less than a thousand dollars. Yeah. And um, but I just recently, with um, the funding from YouTube Next Up, YouTube Next Up, um, I got a Sony RX100 Mark IV, um, a tiny little point-and-shoot camera that happens to shoot super great video. Um, that's what we're shooting this on right now. I'll have a picture of it appear here. And we shot the Christmas video. Um, on this, so if you watched the Christmas tree, um, it was that, and um, and that's what we're using now. Who or what inspired your film ambitions? So, how did you first get into film, and what made you think you could do it, and want you, make you want to do it? I feel like should I do more interviews in the future? This is something that I, I really need to figure out uh, a really concise answer for. Yeah, I actually wanted to be a comic book artist you originally. Do that a lot. Yeah, I was like in elementary school. I was the kid who could draw good, and um, but uh, and then but then I realized that all my ideas for comics were really I was more interested in like skipping ahead to the film adaptations mm -hmm. and making those. I don't know. I was just I really liked movies and comics and stuff like that from an early age, and always I was like very intent on like all you know eventually, yeah, you know making them myself. Mm -hmm. um, there might be. Like a, a better, a better, more concise single single incident that started all of this, mm -hmm. but I can't remember. We'll come back to it in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll ask my parents. Maybe they know. Would you ever be open to a collaboration with a smaller YouTuber? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, uh, it's not something I think a lot about. And uh, I'd say tentatively yes, but unlikely. Ten yes, tentatively yes, but unlikely. Okay. Grant Morrison or Alan Moore, will there be another comic book creator's fight video? Whoa, that's that's a bunch of questions. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I, kind of I love Grant Morrison. I love Alan Moore. I slightly prefer Grant Morrison. Me too. Yeah. That's how I feel. Will there be another comic book creator's fight movie? Probably not. Just because um, we've done Grant Morrison versus Alan Moore. And we've done Stanley's Final Battle, where he fights Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko. Mm -hmm. And I feel like those five are the comic creators that that are like the most like larger than life figures and right. lend themselves to kind of like exaggerated cartoon versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. And there isn't really, you know, I can't really think of anyone else who would really be like well known enough mm -hmm. and um, and like. You know, we can make just like a goofy version of them, yeah. like a, like you yeah. know, where they have like physical characteristics and like catchphrases and stuff like that. Bendis. Ben, Ben. Yeah, I mean, he's like very a, Bendis is recognizable. Yeah. Well, well, there's like uh, we could do all the bald Bryans fighting <laughs> each other. <laughs> That'd be good. There's a lot of them. I like that. And um, but yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I don't know. There's like the the Image Comics founders, mm -hmm. and um, but I, I don't know. Like you know. No one else is, is like, you know, like like Morrison and Moore. Like, like look at them. Like, you know, you've got no beard and all beard. It's, uh, it's... So anyway, probably not. Okay, well, alas. Um, Death Christ also asks, which character from Marvel or DC would you love to write? If you were writing that comics. I don't actually really want to write comics very much. Um, I'm... I think writing is like an agonizing experience, and I would hate to be on a monthly like a comics deadline for that. I'd be very bad at that. Um, uh, probably either um, like some, some, some teen characters. Like mm -hmm. I feel like a Tim Drake comic mm. would be cool. Yeah. And... Um, I love teen drama. So. I, 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 look, I'm the guy who made Aquaman the teen drama. So yeah. Um, actually, Teen Titans could be fun. Yeah. Um, and, but most importantly, a Modoc and the Spot team up comic. <laughs> <laughs> because you knew that was coming. I wish that would happen. When did you see film as a vocational path? Also, did you study it in school and how'd you meet your crew? Those are the three questions. Okay, um, when did you see film as a vocational path? Um, high school, maybe? Yeah. It was just, like, I think in high school, I just had a really single track mind where that's 
what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was it. I was going to, you know, yeah. I was going to find a way to make a living as a filmmaker. Um, and it kind of stayed the same. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, because I don't know how often I say it in videos, my sort of, I guess, day job is doing freelance video work. So it, it, there's very much an overlap. Did you study it in school, Patrick? Did I study it in school? Uh, sort of. Kind of. Um, I have a, uh, Mary and I both went to Oberlin College. Mm-hmm. In Ohio. And, um, and I have a degree in cinema studies from there, which is less film production and more kind of like English, but instead of reading books and writing papers about them, you watch movies and write papers about mm. them. Yeah. And it's like film criticism, kind of. Exactly. So mm. I studied that in school, and so I learned a lot about cinema as a medium. Mm. And it did make me a better filmmaker. And um, and I took whatever film production classes there were. And I did actually study abroad at the Prague Film School in Prague for a semester. Thank you for explaining that. I thought that yeah. was important. Um, and, um, and that was really production-based. Right? That, that was all production-based. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, so I did not go to, like, a straight-up four-year film school. How did you meet your crew? This is something that I also think deserves its own video because mm-hmm. we've never really properly introduced the whole crew. Yeah, yeah. And um, they just appear in things. Um, the vast majority of the crew that we regularly work with are friends of mine from high school, mm-hmm. friends of mine from college, yeah, friends of mine from high school That's and college. I've been lucky enough to um, to be friends with a, a lot of people who were like talented at things and mm-hmm. um, and keep agreeing to work with me. This next question is my favorite question so far. So thank you, Ashley Harrington. She asks, "Would you rather have constant hiccups or no fingers?" That's some, an important question to so, ask. So yeah, no fingers at all or constant hiccups. Both are kind of terrible. Constant hiccups. Yeah. Because I think you could get used to it over time. Right. And then you could still pick things up. You know that there was a woman who had hiccups for like 10 years straight? This has been scientifically recorded. No. Yeah, it's a thing. Uh, how, how did she how did she cope with it? Uh, she went to all these doctors and nobody could figure out why it was happening or how to treat it. And then she had to get surgery for something else and they accidentally severed a nerve in her abdomen and they stopped. Wow. I read that in a book when I was 10. <laughs> and clearly that, that information has never left you. Oh, yeah. Constant hiccups. So, so uh, constant hiccups because... Yeah, uh, at least you can still pick things up and like function. It, it's not going to like impact your day to day life as much. Yeah. So that there you go. Sense. Okay. Let's see. Who are the members of your production crew? Okay. That's um, kind of the people you guys see on screen. Yep. So there's Matt and Jake Torpy. They are brothers. They are friends of mine from high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is Mike Curran, who is still a part of things, even though he's physically in Philadelphia most of the time. Um, but not he, mentally. Well, he's he's still like corresponds with us and like helps with scripts. So mentally, he's in New York City, but physically, he's in Philadelphia. Exactly, he's a friend of mine from high school. Okay. Um. I uh, let's see. Kendra helps a lot on things. Uh. She's a friend of mine from college. Chloe's in a lot of videos. She's a friend of well, originally Mary's, and then mine. He's uh, still my friend. From high school, I still your friends. <laughs> um. And Scott is in a lot of things, and I know him through a friend from college. Mm-hmm. That that they're the members. And there's a. Kind of important person. You're kind of forgetting. I don't think I am. Nobody? No? Not maybe your sister? Huh? I know Mary from home. From uh, from Sometimes since... I help out with videos. Mary has helped out. She totally has. I do voiceover on things sometimes. Sometimes you hear Mary's voice. Occasionally you'll see Mary standing there. And um, occasionally she helps with costumes. And occasionally I hold things. And she's great at holding stuff. I have arms. I have known her since the day she was born. Yes. Okay. Um, Oh, and I'm sorry. Ian Paul asked that one. Um, Ian also asked kind of a good question. How long does it take to shoot and edit videos? Uh, It totally varies. Um, I wish we could do more videos that could be shot in a day. Usually they're shot over... I'd say, you know, like, oh, usually about a week, a week and a half 
And because, um, you know, it was like between like shooting and editing. There's mm-hmm. usually, uh, you know, a few days of like um, production, uh, usually like for like, I don't know, three or four hours each. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then editing for a few long days. So, yeah, that's on average. What is your opinion on the Criterion Collection and do you have any Criterion Collection films? Look, I love it. <laughs> Obviously. And you have a bunch. Yeah. yeah. My two most recent additions to my Criterion Collection, to my Criterion Collection, are, uh, are The Brood and Don't Look Now. These movies are both great. What film or films do you think should be remade if it could actually be done well? So I think what he means is a film that was not executed very well that you would want to remake. I have an answer for this. Okay. And I feel like I tweet about this once a year. Okay. Okay. And actually this is relevant because I just did a video. This relates to my video essay from a couple uh, weeks ago. Okay, so I love Shane Black, obviously. I made a whole video essay about him. And The Long Kiss Goodnight is a really frustrating movie to me. Because I think it's a great script, and Rennie Harlan, who directed it, I think kind of botches the execution. Rennie Harlan is not good at, like, uh, tricky, like, tonal balances. Mm. And I think he um, misses the mark a lot, especially in, like, the first half of the movie. Mm. And I would love to see that movie remade with the same script and um, and... Uh, just w- with a, a better director. Actually, I'd like to see uh, Shane Black directed himself. And, because, uh, yeah, that's... It, sh- it should... The movie is, like, all right. It's, like, pretty good. Mm-hmm. and uh, But it should be great. So, uh, yeah. I would be down for a remake of The Long Kiss Goodnight. What's your favorite Tarantino film? Can you pick? If you had to pick one. That's hard. What would you pick? What do you like? All of them. Uh, I know. Uh, you know, I actually rewatched almost all of them last year. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to say Kill Bill. Me too. Will Carmack asks... Will Carmack. Do you know my, Will Carmack? My buddy from YouTube Next Up. Oh! Will is awesome. I love Will. Cool. Well, Will asks a really great question. If you could have a superpower slash magical piece of equipment relating to making a film production move smoothly, like a camera that always focuses on what you want it to focus on with no adjustment, for instance, what would it be? So some superpower. Or I got like it. Magical I got equipment. it. I would like a floating uh, cardioid microphone or like a boom mic oh. that could just that didn't need an operator and would just hover. And the, it would never perfect, be in the shot. It would never be in the shot. Yeah. Right above the actor's head. Because for my, like, you know, uh, janky micro-budget productions, I've usually, like, you know, it's... I've always got to have an extra person there to, like, operate the... Yeah. You know, be the audio person. And, um, and that can be, like, the toughest thing to find sometimes. And so if I just had a mic that would be just, like, right there, over their heads, always in the right position... That'll be the best. What would you do for a Klondike bar? I would go to the store and buy one because I'm a goddamn adult. Do you or do you not recommend film school for upcoming filmmakers? And do you have aspirations beyond your YouTube channel? And what are they? I'll start with the first one. Film yeah. school. Film school isn't as important to have a career in film or to be a filmmaker as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Because with... Uh, with technology that's available, like we're, we all have HD cameras in our pockets. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been, been this democratization of, of filmmaking where like suddenly anybody can do stuff and it's not like you have to go to school to get access to the equipment. Um, in terms of if I recommend it, um, I think it largely depends on uh, if you like if you're considering this or like wondering if you should, mm-hmm. um, what you currently have access to. And if it is currently within your means and resources to be able to to make stuff, mm-hmm. and so for me, I mean, I didn't really go to film school, but I, and so, but I already had like a whole team of people to work with. I like would save up and buy my own equipment, mm-hmm. and so I already was like, like I like made, you know, two 
uh, feature films before I went to college. Right. And um, they're not good, but I, I made them like, on my own. And I, mm-hmm. So I was already making stuff. Mm-hmm. And so um, I... Uh, so to me, it wasn't really necessary. But for some, but if you're, if you don't happen to have like people to work with, and if you don't happen to have the equipment, it can, it could be really useful mm-hmm. because then you'll you know finally be in an environment where you can you know be making be making films. And um, also a big advantage of it is that it can it gives you a network of people. And um, suddenly you have it gives you collaborators. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you you know because knowing people. And having connections is important, and going to film school will give you those connections. So, so yeah. So that's my my answer. My answer is so it's it can be useful. It's not necessary for everybody. Yeah, I think what you've always said is like get out there and make videos or like make movies because you right. you basically learned most of your stuff by just doing it. Yeah, and um, through trial and error and. Experience. Right. Don't wait for film school to, right. to, to be making movies. Just do it immediately. So what was the, the next part of the question? Was it a, oh, the next ambitions? part was, do you have aspirations beyond your YouTube channel and what are they? We kind of talked about that before. I have many aspirations beyond my YouTube channel. Um, to make a feature film? I sort of, you know, as much as I love YouTube, I, lo- I love the medium of making YouTube videos. It's a really fun place. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do sort of look at it as... Um, and I, I, I'd like to think that I could always keep putting videos on YouTube and because it's a different it's its own medium um, mm-hmm. it's not like a, an inferior form but uh, sorry that seemed really pretentious the way I said that um, but I uh, but but to an extent you know I use YouTube to you know make you know videos that will get attention and then hopefully lead to opportunities to you know to make some more ambitious stuff uh, I'd like to make longer format stuff YouTube is not really the ideal place for for you know, longer form storytelling, mm-hmm. and um, I really would like to you know, I'd like to make movies that play in theaters. Next, we have a question from Mod. If there was an apocalypse, which YouTuber would you choose to bring along to survive? There is only one right answer. This is a very simple question. I would bring my buddy Taylor Martin from the YouTube channel Mod. Because he is very skilled in the outdoors, mm. and he is the person I would want by my side, having to survive in tough situations. Also, bringing Taylor would probably mean that we would also get his good buddy, Swan Ronson, who is one of the, the most skilled outdoorsmen probably in the world. And um, and yeah, with, with those two by my side, you know, I'd, we'd be unbeatable. We'd survive forever. Good answer. I realized that that question had a very narrow target audience, but uh, I thought it was important to answer. Uh, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions. And there's some repeats, so I'm just kind of reading through. I am going to read this question verbatim because it is very funny. William Gomez902 asks, Hi, Merry Christmas. What are your favorite stories in comics, and what are your favorite superhero? Is Spider-Man? Is Spider-Man right? Thanks for your amazing work. So wait, what are my favorite stories in comics? I think uh, the question is, who's your favorite superhero? And I think William is really hoping that it's Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man is probably the greatest superhero of all time. So many levels. It, yeah, it's He's just... so relatable. It's it's like the, the best, the most perfect uh, concept. Such perfect motivation. Yeah. Um... I think I, but but I, I might have to go with Batman. So essentially, uh, my like origin story, I guess, is uh, when I was like four years old. My parents showed me the nineteen sixty six movie Batman the movie mm-hmm. with Adam West. Mm-hmm. That uh, was the most astounding thing I'd ever seen, and it is the reason that I ended up the way I did because it started this intense obsession. With first Batman and yeah. then comics and stuff like you that. You have to say Batman. So, um, you're, you yeah, to. exactly. A lot of people like Batman for weird reasons. There are weird Batman fans out there. <laughs> and, um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Who, people who are into Batman because of like this like, strange power trip. And, um, okay. Yeah, trust me. Um, but, um, I just, I really, um, I think, I just love Batman. I think he's, I think and all of Patrick's friends. From when he was little, will tell you. Patrick loves Batman. Yeah, I was the kid in school who liked Batman the most. You're a good moderator, Mary. Thank you. 
cute. It's fun. I was wondering where you get the budget for some of your bigger videos. As you know, your channel isn't really that big yet. Thank you for reminding us about that. I do know that my channel is not that big yet. <laughs> um, I, I, but I like the yet because it indicates that maybe we could yeah. get bigger. And I think maybe what they're implying there is you don't have sponsored videos. We don't. Mm -hmm. We don't. So, the whole time that we have for the past five and a half years, mm -hmm. the the budgets for the videos have come out of my own pocket. I just pay for all the stuff myself. Yep. And um, and uh, I know you, you do, you know, be on YouTube, you make money from ad revenue. We don't make a lot. It does not cover the budgets. I lose money doing this. I do it because I love it. But this is why last year we launched a Patreon. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, because oh, here's a plug for that. Because all the money that um, raised from that goes right into the budgets for the videos. It's not to like. It's not that I want to get paid. It's that um, that allows us to to make the videos a bit better because it provides a budget that's not just you know me paying for everything. Right. So like it will very practically go to like a more expensive costume that you want to buy. Exactly. Or a prop or something like that. Exactly. So it you know it's always been you know me providing the budgets but um but now patreon also helps with the budgets do you read superhero comics yeah he does we also got a couple questions via email so ethan asked dear patrick what would you recommend for aspiring filmmakers to do in life to do in life to do in life okay um i think the most important piece of advice that i can uh, in part. In part. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. In part upon aspiring filmmakers is to use whatever resources you have and to start making stuff immediately. Mm -hmm. I really think this should I should do a whole video just about how to be, you know become a filmmaker or yeah. what to do if you're an that aspiring filmmaker. But um, but basically don't don't wait to get the budget to make your dream project. Mm -hmm. um, just work with whatever you have now because I'm positive that you have something that will shoot uh, video footage. Right, probably, probably your, your phone. phone. And um, if not, something better than that. Mm -hmm. But your phone. But look, uh, have you seen the movie Tangerine? It's, it's a, great. It's great, and it was shot on an iPhone. So use whatever you have and make stuff and accept the fact that for a while, probably everything you make will suck. <laughs> and, uh, and you just have to keep making stuff and then it will suck less. It's like playing an instrument. Like you're not gonna, you know, learn how to play the violin by thinking about the violin and or like watching other people play the violin. Right. Yeah. You got to do it every day mm -hmm. and just keep doing it, and mm -hmm. eventually you'll get pretty good at it. One other question: Pippi Streamos asks, which YouTuber would you most like to collab with? Neil Ciceriga. <laughs> I don't know what it would be, but he's my favorite person on YouTube, and it would be an honor to work with him. So, Mary, is that all the questions? That's all the questions, or at least all the ones that I picked. So, so in other words, blame Mary if uh, we did not cover your questions. That was the questions are. The questions are. That was me. Anyway, maybe we'll do this again sometime. Uh, let me know if you want to do this again sometime, and, um, and let me know if there's anything that we mentioned in this video that you want me to talk more about. You could leave a comment. You, the there's comment a whole section. comment section right there. Whoa. Yeah, where you can do that. Whoa. So anyway, um, our dad just got back here and uh, and he probably thinks we're weird sitting here talking to, to a, a camera, like a bunch of strange millennials. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, that's it for now. I hope everyone had an awesome Christmas. Our whatever holiday mm -hmm. you do celebrate. And um, we're gonna eat the rest of these cookies. Yeah, they're tasty. Because that's the best way we could think of to spend our time.